for this particular episode, we're going to go roster review. We got a patron roster here, Neil. Uh, he has won the league three years in a row, ending in 2020. So a couple years ago, he dominated. Right. Tried to retool and get younger, made some bad bets on trades, had to start a rebuild season and a half ago. I want to see how my progress is. He's got 12-man super flex PPR, non-tight end premium, start 12, defense kicker start. He's trying to get rid of that. 19 bench for one year taxi. So, you know, good depth there. Finished 11th because he held Puka and Flowers on his taxi. Uh, rookie draft is snake to determine the lottery. I have one three. One four one five two one two 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 three 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 five three seven four ten. I also have two f- twenty five first, seconds, and thirds. If I can't make some trades with the picks, I plan to stock on up on some young QBs. Uh, would it be too soon to start acquiring running backs? I'll take any advice on how to hit this upcoming rookie draft. Thank you in advance from old Neil. Appreciate you, Neil. Uh, me and Big Co are going to spend a couple minutes here breaking down on on kind of what you what you got going on here let's let's look at the team real quick yeah so it's super flex non-tight end premium start two wide receivers and then three flexes and a super flex so he's got herbert Brees, then travion williams so hole there then he's got puka that he's taken off the taxi squad he's got chris olave he's got tucker craft so i like tucker craft but probably a hole there and then he's got what's not premium so we're not terribly concerned about it uh, then he's got Zay Flowers, JSN, Drake London. You want to try to make it so JSN does not have to be in your lineup. Sure. Uh, even though I like JSN and I'm, you know, I'm fine with having JSN. I'm fine trading for JSN, but you want to get JSN out of your lineup. You got Jacoby Brissett as your second starter uh, for your quarterback position, Cameron Dicker, and the Las Vegas Raiders. And then on the bench, uh, a lot of cuttable assets here. So you're not worried about uh, not enough room for. <clears throat> all these draft picks because that can be a concern you also have the whole taxi squad which all four guys on there ronnie bell um the wide receiver from cincinnati i never can get his name right Uh, malik heath and tyson badgett all can go so you have four extra spots there yeah so on his bench the people really only that he needs to worry about keeping you could hang on to banican if you want to at perry's worth keeping trey palmer's worth keeping Michael Wilson, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, if you got Noah fan, I'd hang on to him. Kate Otten, for sure. And then you got you got an extra kicker on the bench, so you got to like, drop him immediately. <laughs> um, and you got three defenses on the bench, so I mean, max two defenses. You, you got a bunch keep- of you got a bunch of rookies coming in, and you got four spots on because it's one year taxi, like Casey said. So you got four spots for sure every year for your taxi that you have to clear out. And Casey said all those guys can be dropped anyway. You have plenty of draft picks coming in, and it seems like you have plenty of space on your bench here. And like you said, Casey, we got Travion Williams in the lineup, so that's the spot. I mean, you can cut him. Um, it, and Tucker Craft is a nice young piece to have on the team. Don't want him in the lineup. Jacoby Brissett's probably going to be starting for some or half or mid- middle of the year. Um, so that's a really good, actual good spot quarterback to have on your team well, and, pl- super flex. and plus you're in in position at one three one four one five to potentially get may if you want to um and sure. then you have Brissett, so that's not not the worst so combo to, to have so that's that definitely where we were heading next talking get, about his draft picks gets you some starters um but so you have one three one four one five he already has you know two first two seconds two thirds next year so i'm, I'm assuming he's acquired an extra one of those it's not you know he's not saying he has two extra ones he's saying he has his plus somebody else's for the first second and third. So that's a good start. You clearly need at least one quarterback in this draft. Um, I think the first couple picks for him are pretty easy. Well, uh, what I'm, are you thinking? Well, obviously, you know, it, it, you got three, four and five. So it really doesn't want really what matter of what, what order you want to call it in. But I think, you know, you got Herbert. I think you're taking Jaden Daniels. I think you're taking um, neighbors or Daniels, either one first or second at three and four. And then at five, if you want to play the trade back game, you can. You can grab Drake May, but I mean, it's not tight end premium. But I would have no problem looking at a, a sure thing prospect in Brock Bowers. Every, Brock Bowers is getting the heat, and everybody says the Raiders can't do it. Everything that's come out of the Raiders front office since they've drafted the guys, you know, move tight end, uh, slot wide receiver, uh, weapon, this and that. I mean, obviously weapon isn't what you want to hear, but with, with him, it's not like just a, a, you know, a, a yak type Malachi Corley type wide receiver. It's freaking Brock Bowers. Um, you could probably trade back a couple picks. I've seen Brock Bowers fall in, in non-superplex drafts a couple spots. 
And you, I mean, I'm not saying prioritize him, but I would say with all that draft capital, you don't have a wide receiver that you, a, a tight end that you want in your lineup. You're really not that far away. Obviously, you got some big holes, but like, you know, Zay Flowers and Drake London, they're solid players. You know, they're solid players. Uh, they get the Kirk Cousins bump here. Zay Flowers is going to get the second year in the system bump here. And I think that, you know, Lamar could definitely take another step forward. Their offensive line oh, fell up. And Zay know. closed the year real strong. Sure. And, and I, so I think, uh, like you said, JSN, the idea would be, I mean, neighbors would come in and put JSN right on the bench. You know, you draft neighbors, you plug him in as a starter, you move JSN down. So those are your first three picks right there. The first two, Jaden Daniels and neighbors, I think those are automatic picks. If you want to, if you got, when you're on the clock and you got some people in your league that fall in love with Jaden Daniels and want to give you something nice, that's fine. Um, but if you just want to make the picks, like you said, Hey, if I'm not making any trades, what would you do? I would take those two players for sure. I might trade down a couple spots from five because it is super flex. It's not tied in premium, but like if you miss quote unquote, miss Brock Bowers on the trade down and you got something worth trading down for, then you're going to be stuck with a third, another quarterback on your team, like JJ McCarthy or Drake may, or, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to trade back four picks and hope, you know, if I get paid enough, I'll trade back as far as I need to. But you got all those early twos, you know, so I would have no problem positioning myself. I mean, if you want to take the swing on Drake May or get trade back a couple picks because you're like, all right, I can trade back three picks here and I'm getting Drake May, Roman Duze or Brock Bowers or J.J. McCarthy. You know, like you can't mm. if you're fine and comfortable with some of those players and you get something worthwhile to trade back for. But what, what I have been seeing is once those couple of pearly, you know, shiny objects go off, because of the spot that Roma Dunze got traded, got drafted into, and some of the quote unquote JJ McCarthy got taken after Penix, and maybe he wasn't even the guy the Vikings wanted. It seems like, and Drake May now, you know, oh, he's got a lot of work to do. So all of a sudden, pick five, pick six isn't as glamorous as it was a couple of weeks ago, and everybody's trying to trade back out of that spot. So he might not get worth, might get worth your while there, and maybe you get. Even if you're at five and you want to trade back two spots and you get a second or a third next year and that's all you can get, if you're comfortable with all those players, it doesn't matter. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure once you have daniels you'll have herbert and daniels and and then knowing that you you know even if you don't get a, a your next quarterback with that pick you, if you get brock bowers you take roma dunze I, I like all that i like all those players i like the adding that depth to your team is great but then you got two 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 three two four um i mean you're gonna you you need to be walking out of here with Penix, you know or you could trade back you Penix or Bo Nix, but Penix for because you're basically yeah, two, playing the long game. Two anyway. one, two two, two three. One of those guys hopefully is Penix or Nix. You know exactly, and and they're not they're not they're not both going to be gone, or you just got those all those wide receivers pushed down to you, or you know you get a Jonathan Brooks and you get a Lad McConkey and uh, Brian Thomas. If the, if the two quarterbacks have already gone by then, you cause imagine Xavier Worthy's going to go at, at, at nine. JJ McCarthy is going to be eight ish. You can flip flop those if you want to, but by the time you get to 10, most likely Xavier Worthy's gone. Maybe Jonathan Brooks jumps up there and pushes Xavier Worthy back a spot, but you could, I mean, because you got these blocks of picks, you got mm. the, the two, one, the two, two, and the two, three, you basically control that section of the gra- draft. You got the one, three, the one, four, the one, five. You control that section of the draft. You could pop off two picks, trade back from five, pull up, you know, maybe if the, if the trade, if the draft picks work out correctly, maybe you could move up two, three to one twelve or something like that. And then, you know, maybe your block of three went from one, two, three in the second round to one, twelve, one, two, you know, it's a, it's just yeah. kind of, you, you got a lot of options and then you got the three, 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 five, three, seven, and we'll give you names to, to put, you know, you're, you're going to be able to stack up some really good looking, you know, you you probably throw, I don't think it's necessarily too early for you to take running backs. Cause I really don't think as bad as your team looks bad. When you get two players down your starting lineup and you see Travion Williams, you're like, Oh gosh, where are we going from here? But then, you know, cause you got Justin Herbert, Brees Hall and then Travion. So yeah, you need a running back, but then you got Puka and Olave. Okay. Tucker Kraft for sure. Not the best looking name in your starting lineup. Put him on your bench, put somebody, you know, better there. But Zay Flowers and JSN and Drake London, all you need to do, like you, JSN being on your bench after this is all said and done is fantastic. 
You know, you're about to re, you're about to rebuild your team here. It's gonna be fun. This is gonna be a great fun r- rookie draft for the, for uh, Neil here. I'm excited for him. Yeah, I mean that without it being premium, and even in some premium drafts, we're, we're, I've seen Senate fall when we do mocks. Senate falls a lot, so you, you could even get like you're a probably Senate, getting Senate in the three. You could get him in the in that three three range. So um, for me, taking it back to the top of this thing, you know, you, you asked if you couldn't trade, and I think we can look at both sides of this um, if he can't get any done because I, I would agree for the most part. I'd take the one three, and then I'd sit on the clock at one four one five, see what I could get done, and on the one three. I'm fine with taking neighbors there because I have I could basically take both the other quarterbacks with one four one five anyway. Yeah. Um. So I would pop off neighbors and then I would just chill there and try to find a deal to either move back or move out and get a veteran quarterback or whatever you want to do. I want to leave that spot with a with with at least one quarterback. If you can't trade, I would probably pop off May and um and Jaden Daniels there at one four one five. I don't think you'd be upset with that. Now, no. Now, when you're on the clock at one three, and, and if you have a ten hour clock, it doesn't matter. But like if you're on when the, when you get on the clock at one three, even though if you want if you do want to click neighbors or or Jake Daniels really quickly, don't because you don't want to go to one four right away. Right. And then guys, you know, you have three picks in a row. You might as well take as much time working on three. Uh, you know, if you're you know you're going to pick three but you're go ahead and start trying to pay, trade four or five mm-hmm. and, and while you're on the clock for three and people are like, well, I want to, Hey, I'm you, taking you know, neighbors. I'm taking neighbors, but I don't want to move down the line yet. And somebody might not be happy with that. But somebody some, loves Jaden Daniels. I could tell you somebody loves Jaden Daniels. Maybe really. you should love. I, and Daniels. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm necessarily out on not taking Jaden Daniels, but somebody loves him and you could probably get paid to either move way back and pick up a quarterback or just completely trade out and pick up, uh, you know, a, a, a quarterback that, you know, could start. I've, I traded out, in this one four spot for Kyler Murray. Oh, you 100%. Know? So you can you you if you can find if you can sit on the on here and find a a, a pl- you know, I know, you know, you said if I can't trade but we can right. we can hit like I that's what I'm I'm going to sit at one four one five. How far back do I have to move to p- pick up a good player and move back and still get a player that I like being yeah. that 110 to yeah. to you you already have some of those other range but 110, 111, 112 that's still good range. You could even still get another quarterback in that range you could get jonathan brooks or trey benson in that range and, and add a running back um so that's that's kind of how i'd be looking at that one three one four one five i like i like the idea of taking neighbors there like you said you wait and then you, you now you control the other two uh quarterbacks if you really were feeling fancy and you wanted to take roma dunze with the one five i couldn't argue with that or, or really bowers sure i think bowers probably going to hang around especially not being pre- even in premium he's gotten pushed down so i would for the most part, if, if I had to bet on which guy would get pushed down the most, I would say it's Brock Bowers. It take, just takes one though. He could be a guy from one five to to one nine, and you still get and you still get Brock Bowers. Yeah, I took one. Um, I took Brock Bowers at one four in the in the FFPC rookie draft. It that's one point five tight end per catch. Not and super flex though. Not super flex. Yeah, because not super flex. Good point. But I I took him with no problem. No, it's, it is premium, you know, so it, it's not. Yeah, there po- there shouldn't really be any huge bump here. It should. J.J. McCarthy went to the Vikings. It's a good spot. If it's yeah, super flex, spot. I'm fine with saying, hey, I'll take J.J. McCarthy. Other than that, there should be no bump. Like well, Malik Neighbors like, could have if Daniel Jones isn't any good and doesn't play well, like it's basically the same situation Brock Bowers is in. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it could be a year before you get your your quarterback with him you let know me what hit I mean? back let me hit back what you said you traded the one four for Kyler if you trade the chance to take Jaden Daniels you're probably not getting anybody with the that extreme of upside Kyler is a really really good second place of that upside if there is if you do want to call him second place but you could take a lot of your downside out because if it doesn't work he's obviously going to be scrambling around for a year or two mm-hmm. but like I'm gonna take a chance I'm gonna take this opportunity right now to say that Casey was calling this this position with Justin Fields two years ago. Casey was saying this, and I was like, there's no chance. He's good enough. His legs are strong enough. He's good enough. And he probably ends up starting for the Steelers. Uh, at some he's going to get another year. shot. It's just now we're on thin but ice. But it happened a lot <laughs> faster than we thought it would. He's on thin ice, and his dynasty stock has plummeted. And Casey called that two years ago. Last year, he told you it could still be coming. And blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm just so... Jaden Daniels. It wasn't, I'm not a Fields hater by any means. I'm not it's saying not a, that Jaden Daniels is Justin, Justin Fields either, but you can mitigate some risk here. You could take a lot of you. You when you take out downside, you're not you know 
you're sometimes you're gonna you're not you're gonna take out some upside too. And that uh, is the op right. that is the exact situation. If you don't if you have a chance to take Daniels and you find somebody that's safer, I don't have a problem with that. Right. Me neither. And and, and as long as you're okay with it when it happens, if Jaden Daniels crushes it and he ex- blows up and he becomes Lamar Jackson or better or slightly worse, then he he's a fantastic dynasty player. But it 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 might not happen. Right. You know? You know, so um, I'd be going looking for Anthony Richardson, Kyler Murray, those type of guys sending sending the deal for to see if I could get get something. Oh, I mean, you're going to add to it to get Anthony Richardson, most likely, and I'd be happy doing really, that too. Right, I mean, people are really high on him. Another option, if you want to go trade back and go down low, like we've been seeing Dak Prescott go in the third round of mocks, you could go way back potentially, and somebody be out of love with Dak and in love with Jaden Daniels because. Mm-hmm. You know, people just hate Dak right now for whatever reason. He was probably had his best season he's had uh, post injury, uh, maybe ever. Uh, let me he let me crushed for him. So you could go way back, and the, just to give you an example to grab some, for another deal, you could go way back from five or four and grab, still pick at five, still have fun with getting a rookie quarterback, and move way back from four to to eleven, and maybe pick up you know Dak, or maybe you have to move back to two three, or you have two three. You but, probably had to move back farther than that. To you know, get but, Dak, but, but just just saying, like somebody, if somebody else has a bunch of picks and they and they want Jaden Daniels and they have Dak, and they're they like, I'm sick give, of this guy. Yeah. he stinks. He's if, mid as the, sure. as the kids. You know, so well, just 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 an idea of somebody cheaper that you could pick something extra up on. I would I would I would go to the Brock Purdy guy before I went to Dak. Sure, fine. Same same thing. Same thing. He's just twenty four and right, not hadn't got the respect. Yeah, on his name. Uh, now, do you, you know. get do you get the upside? Do you get running with Brock Purdy? No, you do not. But you get safety net, and you're going to get a plus. Jaden, somebody's going to give you something extra with Purdy, and then you put Purdy in your lineup every week, and you forget about it. Yeah. All right. So let's let's jump to the. And then he said, "Is it is it too early to to look at running backs? If you can, if you're down, if you're if you can get Benson or Jonathan Brooks anywhere in the two one two 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 three area, great. If you could trade back and get into the one eleven one and twelve spot and get one of those guys, great. I don't I don't think you have to shy away from. Like I I know it's a. We always talk about you know the the last piece of the puzzle should be running backs, but if you can get good value on a running back, even on a rebuilding, tr- like it's okay to take the running back if you're getting good value on the running back. You're gonna move the running back again. Yeah. But like if you you don't just turn down a trade because oh I don't want any running backs. Like if you're get if if somebody's gonna give you good value on a running back, you could take them, and and you just gotta know you gotta flip them again. So right. Th- so I, I say that to just say that I think you're ready to get grab running backs. You don't want to grab the oldest running backs in the league right now. But you you can go. It's okay to have running backs on this team. You you aren't that far away. No. Well, that's one what, or two rookies hit, and you're ready to roll. Yeah. So you got you know just just to get down the line here, you got your starting lineup right here. You're going to throw in neighbors. JSN goes to your bench. You're going to take Jacoby Brissett out and take him to the bench. And you're going to throw in uh, whatever insert. May or another quarterback. You're going to throw in Jaden Daniels or Brock Purdy or you know plus or any of those guys we just talked about. So you're you're filling up here. And when you get in and say you take five and you, you maybe trade back or spot or two or you don't, you got your you take Brock Bowers or Roma Dunze comes in and he sits on your bench for a while. Whatever happens there, you just got three studs from those first three picks. Whether you make the picks or you make the trades, you're going to get three studs. And then you go to two one two 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 three like we talked about. So I would be looking to get. You know, it's PPR, so you're going to try to get one of those receivers, whether it's a McConkey or a Leggett or a Keon Coleman, or you know, just you're going to get one of those guys. You're going to try to get one more receiver because it is there's three flexes plus the super flex, so it's a big starting lineup. Um, so you know, you want to have get another receiver. You got Drake London, you got Zay Flowers in the lineup. You probably got Lake Neighbors. JSN's on your bench. Grab another bench. Give it. Get a get a McConkey. Worthy's probably gone. Get a McConkey or a Leggett or a Keon Coleman or somebody like that in one of those three picks. Get you a Bo Nix or a Penix in one of those three picks. And the other pick, like you said, maybe that 2-1 is Jonathan Brooks. Maybe that 2... Maybe the 2-3 two is Trey Benson. 2-3, what, or what, you know, maybe... I have no problem with you getting a Trey Benson in that 2-3, but in that between 2-1 to 2-3, if you get you a, a, a wide receiver that you can feel good about, get you a quarterback that you feel good about, and you get your Trey Benson that you feel good about. Got no problems doing that. Mm-hmm. So now you got two right now. You now you got a running back. Now you got you know you picked up you know at least at least one receiver from the first round group. Pick up at least one receiver from the second round group. Pick up a, a quarterback from the first round group. Pick up a quarterback from the second round group. You know, and then whatever you did at one five, whether it's a tight end, what have you, 
whatever. And so you get a, maybe you get Benson at two, three, maybe you get Jonathan Brooks at two, one. Obviously if you got three in a row. It doesn't matter, but you, you know, you're right. not getting Jonathan Brooks at two, three, but because you have all Most three likely. of them in a row, it doesn't matter. So, so now you've added some depth in right. those three picks. So what, what I would add one more layer to that of another option of what, of kind of what to do would be you take a running back and a quarterback and then maybe look to trade back. Cause then you get into a big group of, and, and depending on who you like, but you get into a big group of another wide receivers of, and you're controlling that. So nobody else is taking them. It's Keon Coleman, Pearsall, Mitchell Leggett. Some people have Polk in there. Maybe Jermaine Burton's shot up there for you. Maybe somebody has one of those other running backs in there. There's, I guess there's potential to, to grab a quarterback and a running back you like there and then trade back four or five picks and, and amass something else if you, if you wanted to. So I think there's a, there's, the option to trade back is pop two off again and then and trade back because you can, depending on how you have your tiers built and what you like, you may be able to move back and be in the exact same range of guys that you, how you have it stacked. Cause we've seen sure. Pierce all go at two one. We've seen Pierce all go at two nine. We've seen uh Keon Coleman go at one twelve. We've seen Keon Coleman go at two seven. Yeah. I've seen, seen like I've seen like go at one eleven, seen like go at two ten. Right. So you got, you, you have ability to move back and potentially pick something up. If somebody really likes somebody now, you know, if you like Polk, you like Polk, you might get stuck with Polk. Well, here's what, here's what I, so let's just say, let's say, let's just to play it out. Eight and nine worthy and JJ McCarthy One, you know, the top seven state of top seven, eight and nine, JJ McCarthy, Xavier worthy, 10, 11, 12, because he's got two, one, 10, 11, 12, most likely is but in no particular order, but you got three of them, 10, 11, 12, Brian Thomas, Lad McConkey, and Jonathan Brooks, most likely, but anything can happen. But like, if, so if I, like, if I get a two, one and Lad McConkey's still on the board, like if, like you, you know, to me, that feels a little bit different than a Ricky Pearsall without a move being made by the Niners. Well, it seems like Brian Thomas is the one that's slipping. So, and like, I'd be fine with that too. Two one could be Brian Thomas because somebody, you know, a quarterback or Jonathan. Once Jonathan Brooks gets up in there, if he gets into the yeah. first round, you know, yeah, Jonathan Brooks has got a lot of steam right now. Right. Um, that's a good point. So, I mean, I I would no problem taking Brian Thomas or like like I don't think I would trade back far enough to be like I just got stuck. With, and, you know, and, I, and I've taken a chance here by saying that because Jalen Polk could be amazing. And I love, you know, there's one thing you cannot tra- not that, that you can not teach is, you know, attitude and effort. But and it looks like Jalen Polk's got both of those in, and, you know, bagfuls. Um, so all we could ever ask is the for our top stars to try as hard as it looked like what Jalen Polk's about to do. So Jalen Polk, he's going to quickly become somebody I'm pulling for, even though throughout this entire rookie process until New England took him that early, I had paid no attention to him. You know, yeah. you told me that it was, you know, that the other, that the third guy, that the second guy in Washington was the guy that, you know, what's his name? Um, the guy that went later in the draft. Uh, his name slipping my mind right this second. Jalen McMillan. Um, you know, it's so I Polk would Polk was the third of the Washington receivers for, you know, and Big D's Washington guy who's telling us the same thing. And then the Patriots said, Hey, w- he's our guy. Um, I don't think I would want to trade back from that two one to two two three spot and miss out. I think I would want to like two seven to me is like AD Mitchell, Ricky Pearsall, worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. You know. So like I I think I'd want to stay in that range because you go to two seven or better is key you're guaranteed a Keon Coleman or a Ricky Pearsall or an A.D. Mitchell or a Leggett. They, all those got names fall in 2-7 or better for me. That's kind of like the cutoff. Um, and then if two, and then, you know, if the real, if the real answer to the test was, you know, Jalen Polk, then the real answer to the test was Jalen Polk. Um, but then, you know, you got the, in, in all of this craziness, all those threes that you got, I, you know, package up one or two, package up two or three of those together and come on up and get another guy at the top or, you know, in the middle of that round, if you could get in the get you got, if you can get one more guy in that two, seven or better ish two eight or better ish range for me. Cause it, I'm saying two, seven, but it's it, somebody could take Blake Corum at two, two, right. You know, so like they sure. just push down. Yeah. Somebody could take the, the Jalen Polk, um, yeah. Jalen Wright so, could somebody go, could be into Polk, somebody early. could be into right. You know, mm-hmm. somebody could be, you know, doesn't, there's all sorts of, options to, to to you know make make a, a trade back from two three to you know not lucrative enough and, and still get the guy that you maybe even wanted um so what are you looking at those mid to, mid threes to throw on this team the, uh you know that's three three you, three so five those, three so seven a, a good point is to say those those are great 
pieces to help you move around in this draft. If, yes. if, if you, you know, if you want to move up from two, one, try to throw the three, three and the three, five, three, 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 five, three, seven, throw them all together and see what you could, how far you can move two one up, you know, I don't, you know, who knows, but yeah, just in general, those are good little pieces to have. But if you get down to there and you're going to be making that pick now, we're typically talking tight end premium, but once again, I, I mentioned Senate, even in premium, I sometimes see him in at, at early third. He, there's no, he should be, if we were talking premium now, like I got him up in the two, seven, two, six range. Like I'm taking Senate all day, every day. Uh, but if you can, if you can get him down there in the third with no premium, I love that JT Sanders. Uh, I'll take a swing on him as well. I can't imagine Wright and Lloyd are going to be there with no premium. Um, right. They'll, they'll, they'll probably go. Um, if Jermaine Burton's hanging around, of course, take a stab there. I, I, I like Franklin taking a stab there if, if, if available. Um, but then, um, you know, Javon Baker in the mid third is fun. Luke McCaffrey. I mean, nobody loves him and nobody was real high on him in there. Uh, but I mean, that's good. Levi's right there. Uh, he's already getting some praise in camp. They're, they're loving him. He catches everything they're, they've got. They're moving him around. You know, it, it's got just as good a bet as just about anything left in the third round to bet on that last name right there. Um, Absolutely. And it, you, if it you know, plays out the way that he gets, he, he gets left for dead a mm-hmm. lot. And I, I, you know, there's been a little groundswell. You're um, definitely getting Luke McCaffrey in the late third with no problem. Right. But and I then, mean, you it, know, running back wise real quick, it's Bucky Irving. It's Vidal are, are probably the two at the at the top of the list there for me. And then uh, then I'd probably throw Ray Davis, Shipley and SMA in there. So those would kind of be and Tyrone, Tracy. Tyrone, Tracy. Yeah. You, the, if at you the could end get of, two or three of, of those, it doesn't matter. You could write, you could ball all those running backs up in, in a hat and draw all those names out. You're not going to be upset if Shipley's sitting on your bench. You're not going to be upset if Ray Davis is in there, you know, throwing in touchdowns for the bills from the goal line. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, so in a, if you're looking at the FFD ADP post combine, and this is again tight end premium, I mean, Will Shipley's all the way down at four five. Luke McCaffrey's at three ten. Bucky Irving three eleven. Theo Johnson, which is you know they probably don't want to take that shot non premium, um, but just you know Tyrone Tracy four eight. Um, Malik Washington and and Cowing with your fourths. So those are my favorite end of the end of the draft shots right there. Um, so there's. There's you just got also if you end up having those picks and making those picks, um, it's a good year to do that. It's great. Uh, it's there, a good year a to stack I mean, that and Spencer Rattler. I mean, mm-hmm. you got you're sitting there at three, five, three, seven. Spencer Rattler's hanging around. It's not the funnest, sexiest pick. And maybe it's nothing, but it ain't going to take but a minute for him to like f- for a preseason game or a couple of awesome mm-hmm. throws or and, sure, until somebody's. Can. You know, you could jump may, a whole round until somebody's well, or just like somebody's when they're trading with you is going to be excited about Spencer Rattler being an escalator in a trade midseason. Great point. You know, at this uh, Derek Carr sucks, right? This know. rookie draft, this rookie uh, mock that we did two days ago, Spencer Spencer, Spencer Rattler went four three. It was tight end premium, um, but yeah, I mean, you could probably get Spencer with your late three or uh, you, I think he only has one fourth in his late. Yeah. You could probably get Spencer with your last third round pick, or maybe you've moved around and you got a late third round pick in your, from your trading and stuff. And I think that's a good call. You put him on your bench. He makes a flash in preseason. And um, it's not nearly as fun as all those other names we listed off. Cause he's a quarterback but and he's, he's a quarterback a fifth round and he can pick, help a but, trade get, you know, but I, I, I he's, He's a guy who could get juiced up real quick because he he can make some silly throws and do some crazy shit. And he did have juice back in the day. Right. And so. it's, it's a good point. He's not on a team with a guy like a, a Mahomes where you're like, well, he's not going to play for four years for sure. Right. Until he runs out of his contract and he goes somewhere else. It's, it's car. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's wrap this up. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. We got roster reviews. We do them on Patreon. We had a lot going on, so we haven't been throwing them out to the public right now but we're going to get back to you know throwing those out every other week once a week or so just get get those going but we do do them on patreon we are a little backed up because the nfl draft happened and you know everything got a little crazy there but things are starting to settle back down yep so we're jumping back into those getting caught up uh so if you want to check those out make sure you go over to uh, patreon.com backslash the ff dynasty five dollar holler we have mock drafts we have adps we got uh, a draft kit that's just got so much stats and information on it that jay uh jay wayne put together for you uh, we got rookie ADP. We're we're in the process. Of, we're we're doing constantly mocking uh, rookies to keep building the rookie ADP, and we're constantly mocking uh, startups to get post draft ADP. Where we're probably this last draft's about to finish up, about to have that. 
Um, I got rookie rankings over there. Uh, I'm about to update those. And then we are working on updating the uh, all the dynasty rankings and, and be sure to lock it in on YouTube and you'll be able to catch, you know, some of the higher end ones of those. Be sure to like subscribe. If you're listening on the pod, just hit the five stars, man. If, if you really enjoyed us and you haven't done it, wherever you're listening to the five stars, you know, greatly uh, helps your boys out if, if nothing else. And there is also a free discord channel through the Patreon that, you know, in the general chat will throw, you know, you can ask questions in there. You can do whatever you want. And a lot of people will answer your questions. Sometimes we'll chime in. And then there's all, you know, we'll also throw some of the mocks in there to get more people involved, different groups of people. Cause it's nice to, um, people, help you know, people. just have, yeah, just have different, uh, people on there, but, uh, you know, it's not a bunch of people autoing, you know, you know, sometimes there's right. DLF mocks you do, people don't give a shit. They're just taking, you know, it's people who want to be mocking for the most yeah, part. Yeah, and it's a good, good, good way to put it. Like not even against DLF, but like you get on a website that has a mock draft simulator. Right. Yeah. You can beat you the know, mock draft simulator. You can beat it down. And a couple of times, I mean, you know, there's a couple of the simulators that are pretty decent, but it's, it, you that simulator doesn't even simulate the way your crazy friends are right you know so like the mock draft is with with the uh with our patrons is the way to go because they crazy as hell yeah all right well we appreciate you guys and we will catch you next time peace